this line will go in such a situation that would have been dangerous for us hello everyone i hope you are doing well in this video we are going to learn about the flammable diagram what is flammable diagram then the next one how to know the situation or condition of a tank regarding the gases i mean then we will learn about where to get the data like the lower explosive limit and upper explosive limit or lower explosion limit and upper explosion limit however you say then the next one is what is the way to make the environment safe so we will learn about what is the way okay then we will learn about what is critical dilution with air then we will learn about why do we need to keep the environment safe then the last one understanding of a flammable diagram we need to learn the general state or condition in the fresh air that is the outside environment in the open atmosphere we found nitrogen about 78 percent oxygen about 21 percent and this remaining one percent is carbon dioxide and others now this is a flammable diagram as per the is god now we will talk about the environment inside a cargo tanks so first of all we need to consider such a cargo that is flammable so that we can understand the flammable diagram very well and the cargo name is methanol and here you can see the upper and lower flammable limit is mentioned and this cargo is highly flammable cargo as you know and i have that is why i have chosen this cargo as an example for any of the cargo if you go to this section of msds you will find this lower flammable and upper flammable limit this amount is mentioned as by volume and now you will see how do i draw the flammable diagram of this cargo okay so this 21 percent we can write here 21 percent okay two percent oxygen 16 percent 18 percent and this is 20 percent and for the case of hydrocarbon as we have seen that uh, around six percent is the lower explosion limit and the upper explosion limit is about 36 percent here so we will divide in every section in 10 10 percent 20 is here 20 this is 30 this is 40 percent hydrocarbon okay so six percent is somewhere here so to draw the flammable diagram let's consider around 16 percent is oxygen over there so if it is 16 percent oxygen will be somewhere here and 50 percent hydrocarbon will be somewhere here so we will see where it touches to draw the flammability diagram we have to draw this one to maximum oxygen content of a, of a atmosphere that is permissible to enter we will add this to okay now we can remove this line and this line as we have seen from the material safety data sheet the upper explosive limit of this cargo we have found 36 36 percent and lower explosive limit we have found six percent add these two points on this line okay so here 36 percent is here okay we will mark this line lower explosive limit and this one is upper explosive limit now what needs to show to understand this diagram this was the present situation as i said the whole idea is to avoid fire hazard and avoid human health hazard so this is the fire triangle we can say here is oxygen here is fuel and here is heat these three items are required to make a fire if you have oxygen if you have fuel and if you have at the same time heat then only fire is possible so will there be a fire as per the flammability of this cargo the flammability data upper explosive limit was 36.6 so i have considered here 36 as per the data sheet there will be no fire because the hydrocarbon concentration is more than the upper flammable limit 
that means to make the fire it has to be within the upper flammable limit to lower flammable limit so within this range only the fire is possible otherwise fire will not happen so if there is 50 percent uh, hydrocarbon there will be no fire now if you want to make the environment of the tank free for main entry uh, which is not really available now because the oxygen is 16 percent as you see so if you want to increase the oxygen to 21 percent so you have to increase the oxygen level from 16 percent to 21 percent around to do this you need to introduce air once you will start introducing air the hydrocarbon will be kicked out from the tank so at a point it will be below this 36 percent okay that means it will come within the explosive limit within the explosive limit lower explosion limit and upper explosion limit within this limit that is why we cannot directly introduce air into the tank to make it gas free so what we have to do we have to introduce the inert gas first the inert gas is such a thing when it supply it supply with below five percent and inside the tank it should have maintain below eight percent then it can be said as inerted condition so we can introduce inert gas so that the hydrocarbon will be kicked out from the tank if we introduce the inert gas the oxygen content will decrease the hydrocarbon will also decrease so let's say this line will come this way it means uh, once we, int we start introducing inert gas it will reduce both hydrocarbon and oxygen so at, at some point it will be somewhere let's say four percent and hydrocarbon will be zero now we need to understand how much oxygen by volume is required to sustain or to create the fire this is at least 11 percent okay at least 11 percent oxygen is required to catch the fire and to sustain the fire as i said this line is for oxygen so 10 percent is here somewhere here we can say 11 percent so if we draw the line like this six percent here make like this we can add like this so as we understand there is required at least 11 percent of oxygen and the upper and lower explosive limit range is there to sustain or to catch the fire this range is the only possible range to catch the fire so far this much is clear to us now let me share with you something else here what the industry found that all of the area within these four lines are not friendly for fire and this is true for every cargo what they have found common for all the cargos that the flammability diagram is something like this curved one so for all cases of the cargos they found that not all points like this point this point this point this point is not friendly for fire only they have found hazards for fire is only within this range and this is very common for all cargos that is why you will find the flammability diagram is always like this curved one so now we can remove this line this line these points if the situation or if the condition of the tank falls within this limit it will be considered as within the hazardous range of fire so we don't want to fall within this range like if we consider this point this will be something like 15 percent oxygen and 20 percent hydrocarbon so we never want to reach in this situation so so far we have understood that why the flammability diagram is a little bit curved like this for every cargo and what is this line we have understood that this line is for the hydrocarbon and this part is for oxygen okay and we also have learned that to make fire there must have more than 11 percent oxygen and for the case of hydrocarbon the fire will take place only within the upper explosive limit and lower explosive limit within this range 
and at the same time we learned that the curve always found that not straight by four lines it is found curved one kind of uh, triangular shape type now let me clear all this out now let's consider a tank after discharge for this cargo let's say methanol we found 40 percent hydrocarbon and we found around 13 percent oxygen around 40 percent hydrocarbon and 13 percent oxygen so what we need to do to make the environment gas free let's learn about it we need inert gas and what is inert gas inert gas is such a gas that is used to remove the hydrocarbon without increasing the oxygen basically the gas itself having very less quantity of oxygen less amount of oxygen within the gas that is why it is termed as inert gas inert means it is kind of uh, a gas which has no action as per the solus to supply the inert gas to the tank has to have less than five percent oxygen content then you can term as inert gas supply so from the flue gas or from the inert gas generator we get this gas as a inert gas and we supply into our tanks in this case if we found the situation is like this 40 percent hydrocarbon and uh, and 13 percent oxygen then we have to insert inert gas so what basically happen is once we start introducing the inert gas both content of hydrocarbon and oxygen reduced so let's say the line you will find like this your oxygen will reduce and at the same time your hydrocarbon also will reduce so what is our target we don't want to go in this range at all within this range we could enter the oxygen to make the environment safe for main entry if we could directly enter air the line would have been like this that means this line will go in such a situation that would have been dangerous for us that is why we should insert the inert gas instead of fresh air at the beginning because if we start introducing fresh air at some point we'll go in between this line which is not desirable at all because with the help of a heat source it will start fire from here to here that is why it is not acceptable at all so let me re remove this and what is practically done let me explain that way we insert inert gas so hydrocarbon get reduced and oxygen also get reduced and we continue inerting up to certain point somewhere below the lower explosive limit so let's consider at some point here two percent at this point so the line will be like this so the environment will be gas free at the same time it will not go into this dangerous zone the ultimate target is to avoid this danger zone as you remember we mentioned a topic that is critical dilution with air giving fresh air to the tank this is called dilution with air now we will try to come across with the term critical dilution with air let's say you have bring the environment of the tank up to this level at somewhere here 20 percent and you started introducing fresh air it will go some something like this you can start dilution with air here and it will not go into the danger zone but it is very risky because it is very near it just passed near to the diagram that is why it is called critical dilution with air we should avoid this critical dilution of air from here you should not start introducing air you should start introducing air after or below this lower explosive limit for each cargo it will be the value will be different but the whole idea is like this critical dilution with air is such a position where the dilution with air is very close to the danger zone or the flammable zone i hope you have also understood how tanker vessels do the gas free operation to make the environment free for main entry you have found that dilution with air is like this critical dilution air with air is this this is also they have written dilution with air and this is the flammable mixer 
and hydrocarbon for hydrocarbon is this line and for oxygen is this line by percentage it's all you have understood i believe and as we have targeted for the lesson what is flammable diagram we understood how to know the situation we can check by the gas meter there should have gas meter available on board like the combustible gas meter and for the inert condition of the tank we have tank scope i always keep in mind i t i for inert t for tank scope so tank scope is used when the tank is in inert condition where to get the data for lower explosive limit and upper explosive limit of course we have found that it is from msds so msds is such a document which we receive from the load port and next one what is the way to make the environment safe we have already understood from the explanation that how can we make the environment gas free what is critical dilution with air we have understood then the next one why do we need to keep the environment safe so there may arise a question that why do we need to keep the environment gas free for main entry or for other purposes you need to go into the tanks for i mean the ship's crew need to go into the tanks to uh, clean by mop by doing the mopping or taking out the remaining uh, small amount of water from the bell mouth something like this bell mouth is the point from where we from where the suction of the cargo take place so that part is little bit curved down and from there we need to take out the water and also for the next uh, for the next cargo loading during tank inspection it also has to be ready for main entry in some cases we found the requirement is uh, to be inerted for the next cargo before uh, coming into the loading port it has to be inerted as part of the requirement in that case also you have to make the gas free first then you have to make the tank again you have to make the tank inert again to make it ready for the next cargo and as we have discussed all the way understanding of the flammable diagram in next class we can go ahead with some deep understanding of each of these sections thank you so much for watching this video and hope to meet you in next video